What is up guys, McIntyre here, bringing you another guide gameplay video. Today we are going to be talking about ETC, the hero that has recently been changed since this newest patch. They have gotten rid of all the slide talents and they've kind of default put them into his Q. So he no longer has to take talents at 1 and 4 for slide. They've also changed up some of his 13 talents as well as his 16 talents. So... This is a completely new hero than the ETC that we used to have. He will be played completely different. Um, they actually brought back a lot of what old ETC was about. And I like that change a lot. They brought the early game of ETC back. And they kind of took a little bit away from his late game, but it's not so important to me. I think the one change that I don't like is they got rid of the ability to increase your slide speed. But I think this was intentional because... For the longest time, ETC was a guaranteed stun on a stun tank, pretty much because of the speed at which the slide happened. It was very difficult to juke that stun, right? And that's why we always saw ETC KT, ETC Tyrande, ETC Kerrigan, and not Murden in these cases, because you were almost guaranteed a stun when ETC slid in because of how fast it moved. So Blizzard has decided to get rid of that. So shout out to them, I guess. You know, I can't really complain as it will give you a little bit of ability to like kind of outplay the ETC now because his slide can be dodged. And, you know, like I said, they brought back a lot of his early game. So we're going to go over his build super quick and then we'll go right into the gameplay. The very first level one talents, there's going to be two talents that I think are the best here. There's going to be one trap talent unless it's on certain maps. The first trap talent is going to be prog rock. I think that this talent is going to be taken a lot, but it only scales if you get globes on big maps or two lane maps. Like this talent doesn't get value, but on maps like Spider Queen or Dragonshire, it actually might be the talent to go. I'm personally really into Guitar Hero. Having this be a level one is kind of insane. It gives ETC crazy sustain. You like never need heals, it feels like, with this talent. And it also just kind of just says, hey, here's also 5% attack speed, which could matter in a lot of cases, like on Battlefield for Eternity, being able to punch the boss and heal yourself while giving your team bonus attack speed is pretty sick. And Sky Temple, where you're punching the boss, like these like stagnant objectives that ETC was kind of okay on, he's going to be really good on now with this talent. Um, his other talent at level one that's pretty sweet is going to be Block Party. Obviously, Block Party is Block, and the title is hilarious, but it's going to give Block to not only you, but everyone that's in your, you know, Rockstar range, or, yeah, whatever, whoever's in your Rockstar range will get Block stacks as well when you activate abilities, so if your team needs to deal with the other team's crits and stuff like Thrall and Nova, Greymane even, like follow-throughs, this could be the talent to take, although you're giving up a lot of sustain for the ability to block their chunk, right? Could be good. Uh, we'll probably see it every once in a while. But I really do like just talking over these first talents, like how flexible they are. So Blizzard did a really good job here at level 1. But for the video, we are going to be taking Guitar Hero. Looking at the four talents, we again are put with two difficult situations. The first is going to be loudspeakers. This was default on the old ETC, and it's still really powerful. Being able to increase the range and knockback means that you can push people that are further away, and you push them further. So it's not just range, it's knockback as well. Um, it's really good for peeling, but I think the new superstar here is going to be Speed Metal. It's a talent that used to be amazing on ETC. I think he got it at 7 before. But they gave it to him at 4. 10% increased move speed. AoE is insane. Like, this is going to just help your team chase. This is going to help you escape. This is going to help you engage. This is going to help. This is just going to help everything. So you definitely want to be taking, I think, speed metal. Although, I could say that sometimes loudspeakers could be good, considering you do get to slow at 13, so... But I mostly am going to be taking speed metal and going back to old retro ETC as well. His level 7's echo pedal is awesome. ETC's always struggled with wave clear and 
Blizzard decided to give it back to him with Echo Petal. So pretty sweet. Really like that a lot. Echo Petal is pretty much my go-to at level 7. Although Hamron's cool. You don't get the crit that you really need. And it's on two autos instead of one. I don't like that change. But for whatever reason, it doesn't matter because we're going to take Echo Petal at 7. So now because of Echo Petal, it does introduce the split push ETC back into the meta. I don't think people are really talking about this, but it's now going to be possible for ETT, ETC to split and then stage dive in because Echo Petal's back. So we could take stage dive at 10. It's actually a viable strategy now, but you know, as always, Mosh Pit is one of the most impactful ults in the game. So for the most part, we'll be taking this like 75% of the time, depending on our team strategy. Now our 13 talents are all pretty cool and unique, but there's one here that stands out and it's always standing out. It's going to be face melt. Being able to slow on W is really awesome when you can pair it with, you know, if you slide through the target. I don't, if I would have slid through him, I would have killed him. I'll show you when he comes back. But if you slide through the target and get to their other side, you can then W them to slow them. So it kind of adds an even further CC chain. So if you slide through, then you W, now they're slowed, right? And you just served your team up an Arthas to hit. Which is what ETC's kind of always done. So I don't think there's really an argument for the other ones. I mean, mic check is pretty cool. If you want to like peel a butcher, let's say you, they have the butcher or something and you take loudspeaker with mic check. That could be pretty sweet. And I think Encore, it might have its place on certain maps, but like Cursed Hollow or something, Towers of Doom, just being able to set up that second speaker to be annoying. But then again, you know, all it's doing really is knocking the person back. So I'm not sure how powerful that'll be. We'll have to wait on this talent. I'll have to try it a little bit more, but just by default for me, you know, for all the ETC players out there that aren't really or trying to figure it out like this is where i think we want to be at for this patch so looking at 16 we have again two i would say two takeables here maybe even three honestly like power sliding and taking reduced damage is cool you did lose spell shield on etc which kind of is a big deal but being able to get that 25 percent reduction could be good in some cases if the other team has insanely high burst but I personally really like either aggressive shredding, which is going to allow you to E more, which is going to allow you to sustain more, which is going to allow you to increase your team speed more and cast more echo pedals, right? And heal yourself more just from the base region of the talent. Considering it lasts four seconds, each auto decreases it by one second. You, If you get four autos off within the eight seconds, which you should because... You know, ETC's attack speed is one per second, and then he gives himself increased attack speed when he uses an ability. So, um, you can almost keep your <clears throat> E healing up 100%, which is insane. Like, your sustain and your the ability for the other team to kill you is going to be really difficult if, they're, if they don't have a lot of burst, right? So, I really like aggressive shredding. In, in like a double tank scenario, I could see it being really powerful, right? ETC is now going to be kind of a, a damagey, self-sustaining tank. And then we have the classic imposing with a new change, 20% or 20 second cooldown on an AOE slow with an activatable AOE uh, reduced attack speed, you know, and it has the flat reduced attack speed when they attack you. Still really good. You pair this with, you know... Maybe you could take this way. You could take Encore at 13 and you still have your slow when you slide in. You know, you would slow, W, and then slide, and then, you know, get that second W out. Like, it could be, it could be a pair really well together. We'll see. But Imposing is just really powerful still. It's, it's always been a powerful 16. And with the new activatable, I think it's probably a li even a little more powerful if you use it correctly. Um, at 20, we are always still going to take, for the most part, Bolt of the Storm. It makes our mosh pit threat incredibly high if the other team mispositions. There are like certain situations where you can hold on to your 20. You see a lot of ETC players do it. <clears throat> you hold on to your 20 so that if you just slide in and the other team just banging on you, then you take death metal like right before you die and you get a big death mosh and potentially win the game out, right? That happens a lot. You see that in tournaments. It's not a bad strategy. Um, 
We hardly see Storm Shield. Just not what ETC wants to be doing. He's really a proactive, aggressive tank, not so much a defensive like a Joanna. So you don't really want to go Storm Shield. Power Bus is cool. It does increase the duration of your mosh pit. A lot of times with Tour Bus, you'll, um, you'll ult. And then when the backline comes up to like kind of mess with you, then you'll slide into them, right? But for the most part, I really like Bolt just because it's going to allow you to kind of like bolt slide mosh like i'll do it to this art this like so i'm pretty far away from him i can bolt slide into a mosh and you see etcs do that a lot or even just you know you're you're on mount you see the other team they're kind of grouping up and you just bolt mosh it's really it's really hard for people to react to that kind of quickness you know and that's what bolt allows you to do so it gives etc another form of escape as well and that's something he lacks, but just look over the talents super quick before this game starts. This is the build that I'm going to be going. Guitar Hero at 1, Speed Metal at 4, Echo Pedal at 7, Mosh with the chance to go stage dive, Face Smelt at 13 for the slow, Imposing for the slow and the activatable attack speed, and Blink or Bolt of the Storm at 20 to kind of make the play for my team potentially win the game or use it to escape if i'm threatened and dying right so we'll see you guys in the game uh, i'll talk a little more about what i want to be doing with my slide combos and my positioning on the map because a lot of etcs i think position improperly and that's something that i really want to discuss once i get into the game so i will see you guys all in the game all right guys jumping into this game just looking at the compositions my team has got decent follow-up for me it's actually funny in my tier list, I, I spoke on the fact that we might start seeing a lot of double support here. And in this game, we actually do have it. It's going to be a Lili Rhaegar. I think because the meta is going to shift to a more sustained damage meta, double support is going to be a lot stronger. And, and we see here with the Chromie pick, <clears throat> you know, they don't have a lot of burst, right? It's just they're going to try to poke us down and win through, through the sustained war. So... Having double support is going to be really good against them. Hold on once. I'm going to mute my mic. Okay. I, like, for whatever reason, could not clear my throat there. So, yeah. So, the double support is going to be really effective against their team as they don't really have a lot of burst. And them killing me is going to be, I would say, pretty difficult. Block party does nothing for me here. Could go prog rock, but I already have the double support, so I'm probably going to opt to just go to guitar hero like we talked about. And I'm going to use that to sustain myself with the double support. Should be able to be pretty, pretty aggressive on the enemy team. So I, don't, I don't really want to step up out because I have no follow up for my team, so I need to be a little careful. In the beginning. Like I said, just I don't really think I should be taking that sort of damage. You can already kind of feel the increased range on Crummy being annoying. But if I can get in auto attacks with my E up, then I want to do that because, again, that's going to help me stay full health. I'm not going to need near as much healing for my Rhaegar. Between Globes and just auto-attacking, I should be able to... Yep. Stay full health. The Chromie, even though she is being really annoying, isn't really sticking any damage on me because of the sustain. <clears throat> and because I have the Rhaegar. And the good news is if I find the Chromie, I think I just kill her outright. So I'm going to rotate into this Zul. I might be able to pick him off here. Make sure I don't get my mount broken. If anything, we'll go for the Joe instead. Oh, there's no follow-up there. I should have W'd before. I think my finger was not in the right place for that. So I should have W'd when I got to the bush. That would have given me vision of the bush. And, you know, then I could have body blocked from there. The monk up here. I still think I have to fight this. My team is coming. I think we can win. 
Yeah, look at that sustain. It's pretty insane. They still have my slide up too. I'm gonna get this globe. Oh, Rhaegar might go down here. I can get a really good slide. Now we'll go move speed. Try to move in front of him to get a body block. And then hope the Rainer comes. Nice no, not. So now with the move speed too, I can just kind of run people down. Just autoing to get some health. And now I can go duel this guy. I can just body block. There's really no reason to open up on Joe with your abilities as ETC because most of the time you're just gonna get passive. DK. Let's see if the Rainer comes. If he does, we can kill this guy, I think. I'm not sure what Rainer's doing. It looks like he's just AFK. But yeah, with the level one talent, you can just stand in minion waves and tank them as ETC. And this gets even better when you get Echo Petal. Probably gonna tap after this. I need mana. I really don't think the Rainer should be leaving this lane. But this is my own problem for rotating top and soaking. I, can, I, I open up the door for Rainer to leave. I think him and Delili are duo together, so they're like, you know, hanging out, playing, playing video games together. I'm gonna tell Rainer to go top. <clears throat> I need to be with the team, because I'm the tank. This guy's gonna try to queue away, probably. Watch out for the Tychus. Now we have the echo pedal. So prior to this, like with ETC, you'd want to kind of hang out in bushes and not show. But with echo pedal, I think it's okay to to kind of walk out into the lane. Maybe it'll get a kill here. Oh. Watch the crummy. Wow, the counter. Walking into a time trap when you get rooted so the time the root doesn't hit. I don't see why we wouldn't be able to kill this guy. No calamity. Oh there we go, reset. Cleanse. Uh, I'm going down. I'm going down. Looks like it's an orb build. Leaming. Okay, if she had gone calamity there, I think she could have killed everybody. Orb build against Zul, countering herself. Classically mean. <clears throat> it's okay though. We picked up, I guess, one for one. It's not the end of the world. Look at their team comp too. They 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 have like one way to get me out of my mosh. Hmm. Might be a stage dive game. I think this guy's dead. Oh, it's gonna be close. Depends if I can get the body block on him here. Oh, I don't know how he got around me. I'm headed to the top lane now. Try to fight. Hmm. Looks like Chromie's 2v1ing these guys bottom. I'm just gonna stand mid just in case. Or 10. <clears throat> Probably dead on this route. Yeah. Maybe not. Oh, good play by Kermie. 
Again, that, that was like base. That's the increase on range there coming into play. <clears throat> I don't think that W hits me before this patch. Remy's already max on her Q too. Oh boy, I'm gonna take stage dive. I'm, I want to kill Crummy. I don't think I care about anybody else but Crummy. Mission accomplished. I'm gonna go kill the Zul now. He he probably gets away here because he can root me and then run away. And I don't have anybody else around. The only way is if I can W him, create enough space that when I get out of route, I can slide. <clears throat> Wish I had anyone on my team here. Uh, anyone had rotated, that was a free kill. Double support? Oh boy. So we do have Bloodlust, not Ancestral. This is actually a. And the jugs got cancelled by the shield. Maybe I don't have necessarily the most sustained double support. I don't think either of them took cleanse. I usually don't take cleanse against Zul, uh, Kremi either, so. Might be able to win this fight though. I'm jumping in. Let's see, he won't get stage dive. No follow up again. Got him. Yeah, Sage Knight's putting in a lot of work here. We're losing the push in all the lanes because we don't have much wave clear. And we have Orb Build Lee Ming, so there's not really any wave clear there either. Rainer's fairly terrible at it. And they have like Joe, Zul, even Chromie's pretty good at wave clear. Like one W of Chromie is, will kill the whole back line. Luckily though, new ETC is actually okay at wave clear with Echo Pedal. I mean, that wasn't the coolest thing you've ever seen, but it was pretty fast. I'm actually going to split here and then go top. Go top. I jump. Oh, good. I can probably jump in the fight on this. I really want to get to this Tychus. I have slow on W, so he should be slowed. Ah, switching back to Joe now. Watch out for the poison of a... See if I can get a slide in, no. See if we end up losing DK. There's two bot though, so... Probably, these guys will probably rotate into me here. Now that Lili took top, they're probably gonna rotate up top to fight that. There's Joe Zul. Our team all just left top though. So I'm not really sure about that, but we're definitely going to lose top again, even though we just had control of it. Rainer died bottom. Tychus is top. Can't let Tychus hit me. Ooh, killing that guy would be really good. If only our Lee, Lee, Lee had like shrink ray or something. Yeah, they get DK. Oh, almost died. Took the Kremi. Kremi still took that talent, though. I, I disagree with that. I don't think you need that talent anymore. They really nerfed it. Like you, oh, you have so many more opportunities to do other things. I don't know why my team's standing around mid, but <clears throat> maybe the other team. We'll keep pushing top.
trying to use my W to peel Joe. So like this would be a case where I think um, Mosh Pit would be really good actually. Maybe we can kill this monk. I have a drill on me. Oh. Up top. Again, the orb build Li Ming is just not what we needed this game. I'm gonna look to stage dive. Should be able to kill this guy. Oh, the crummy maybe? Uh, oh, come on. Man, I think I live. Yeah, speed metal. So I'm getting engages on Kermi. Uh, I just have zero damage uh, for, or like follow up on my team. I have a lot of damage. Lee Mean Grainer is a ton of damage, but neither of the player. They, I think both of them are just throwing stuff at the other team. You need to kill their damage. Earth shield. At least Rayar went with Earth Shield. Might be able to kill the Tychus here. Cool. Just barely missed. Don't really want to tank Tychus attacks, but if I have my E up, like, I can punch the wave. Get Guitar Hero Valley. I'm back to full health. <clears throat> so I have stage dive pretty soon. They're they're going to look to engage our easies. It's not a terrible fight for us. If, if I can get, I think, at 16, if I can get on to Chromie with Imposing, I might be able to take her out. Especially if I take Aggressive Shredding. I, I might take Aggressive Shredding here. Because they don't have, well, they have Tychus. Nah, imposing, Monk and Tychus imposing counters. I was going to say, I could take the aggressive shedding shredding to kind of get to Kremi and then just light her up with my E. Just smacking her over and over, you know? But, I don't think it's necessary. We see Kremi top, go top. I jump in, all right. So let's see if my team rotates, or if they all stay bot. Let's see if my team, or they do hard camp. Yep, we're all standing bot. So just in case you guys didn't know, having two people stand on the shrine doesn't actually make it go any faster. So you want to spread your resources when you do stuff like this. Or not okay for us. Hopefully no one gets one shot now by Kremi. I don't really like tanking this, so hopefully we back up. Oh. She has pierce, that's right. Shoot. Oh man, what a god Kremi. The classic a thousand damage cues twice in a row. Holy moly. 2,000 damage in two Qs. 92% of that damage. We did 3,000 damage. Oh my goodness gracious. Guess it's because of her passive it was fully stacked. Kill Oni, she has more than half of their damage. This guy's probably gonna kill him. Wow. Skirmy's pretty good at aiming these skill shots. I mean, my team is fairly bad at dodging them, but this Krimi, I gotta give her props, it's doing pretty well. I think I stepped up into that Krimi thinking that she wouldn't have the piercing sands, and I could block for the Rhaegar to keep him alive, but I was wrong. They, they won. There's no way to stop this DK, I don't think. <clears throat> Maybe they hit me instead of Coring. like, that would be ideal, I guess. Yeah, so, I mean, they're wasting a little bit of the DK's time, but they have they have way too much power here. So I think, I think the new ETC is pretty good. Like, I was able to 1v1 a lot of, a lot of people. Actually, like, old ETC couldn't really 1v1 that well, and I think new ETC can 1v1. Like, I, I, th I just had the most damage on my team as ETC, I think. Uh, unless Li Ming had more damage than me. 
Yeah, she did. She must have. If she had 29% of team's hero damage, and she had more damage than me. But I think ETC, yeah, has a has a still a really good place in the meta, and I think he'll be really powerful. He's a lot more proactive now. He used to be very reactive. And he used to kind of just hide into the shadows and not show himself. But it seems like this patch, he's able to kind of show out and lane a little bit more. The one thing is the slide is slow now, so hitting people on mount is going to be a lot harder, I think. But because they slowed down the mount, maybe it's still be you'll be it'll be possible. But this is the build. Um, it's unfortunate that you know ended up taking an L there, but I tried. I really did. Okay, over. That's unranked for you guys. All right, well that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully you have success more than me with the new ETC. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to throw a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be uploading all the new guides for all the new heroes for the anything that's gotten changed this patch within the week. So I appreciate the support, guys. Cheers, and I will see you all next video.